In the short I made about two weeks ago, I explained hammer units and their relative size. With the knowledge that each hammer unit is 1.905 centimeters in real life terms, we can figure out the sizes of things within source games. So that's what we're going to do today. Let's talk about measurements. If you remember, I showed this cube last time, which is what an object the size of one hammer unit looks like. You may have seen these cubes next to it in my test map, which are slightly bigger. The one on the right is 10 by 10 units, and the one on the left is 50 by 50. Before we start getting into conversations about size, though, I do want to mention a clever tool that Valve uses in their maps called the 3D Skybox. Most 3D skyboxes in Source games render at a 1 to 16 scale, so this means that an object placed in the skybox will appear 16 times larger in the main map. You've probably seen this before if you've played Gary's Mod, and one of your friends decided to turn on Noclip and fly up to the skybox and appeared to be 16 times larger because of it, and then proceeded to build a standoff between Joseph Stalin and Bearded Expense. <laughs> The skybox is especially neat for scale, because any map can appear almost 16 times larger than it actually is. For here though, we'll say it actually is 16 times larger, so when we talk about things in the skybox here, the quote unquote actual size will be what we see in the main map, and not the 1 to 16 scale model in the skybox, because the canon objects which players are meant to see are what we will consider. I mean, after all, Gordon Freeman doesn't know if there's a skybox, and if he did, he would be having more concerns about an existential crisis. So, we'll say actual size is what's in the main map. Now it's time to measure. Let's start with one of the most important things in Half-Life 2, Gordon Freeman himself. Well, he doesn't actually have a cannon height, but it seems that a lot of people estimate it to be around 5 foot 11 inches. I mean, even Black Mesa did that. Measuring in-game to see for ourselves, the player is... only 72 units tall. Wait... That's four and a half feet. And that's not even just the player, mind you. All human NPCs are around that height too. And this is true for most source games. So, for example, in CSGO, the characters are 72 units tall as well. So, the characters in Counter-Strike Global Offensive are this short too. I mean, just to put this into perspective, if any of you have played World of Warcraft, the dwarves are taller than this man on occasion. Who are you? I don't think this was intended, so I'm going to say it was an error on Valve's part. To be fair though, there is this measuring decal in the first map of Half-Life 2. So, by decompiling the map and measuring up to the first line, we can see that according to the decal, 1 meter is 41 hammer units. This makes each hammer unit in this case about 2.4 centimeters, and so at 72 units tall, it makes the player 172.8 centimeters, about 5 feet 8 inches. That's about the average height for a US male, so I assume that's what Valve intended the height of Gordon to be. What's odd about this, though, is that basically everything else in the game is scaled correctly if you measure with standard hammer units. Well, mostly everything. I'm sure there are plenty of exceptions, but take these props for example. The standard crate, an item crate, a med kit, and an oil drum. With these results, it appears that everything else is about reasonably sized, for example, the barrels in the game are actually pretty accurate, as the average size for a 55-gallon drum is about 0.2921 meters in radius, and 0.8382 meters in height, which is actually pretty close to the size of Half-Life 2's barrels. So I guess just when it came to the characters, they were made a bit too short. But come on, we all know the question we want answered. Citadel. I mean, it's basically a massive centerpiece to Half-Life 2's level design, visible from basically everywhere. It's large and imposing, so how big is it? Well, the model in the skybox is 8,431 hammer units tall, which is about 160 meters. So in other words, not that much. It's like the size of a small skyscraper. But the Citadel is bigger than any skyscraper, so clearly that doesn't make any sense. And it doesn't, because you have to remember it's in the skybox. In the main map, it appears 16 times larger. So if we take our original number and multiply it by 16, we see the Citadel is 134,896 hammer units tall. In real life terms, this is 2,569.7688 meters, or just over 2.5 kilometers in height. That makes the Combined Citadel taller than the tallest building in the world, which is the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. In fact, it's just over three times as tall. 
But if you think that's massive, then boy do I have some news for you, because the maps and the engine, on the other hand, are something else. So, if you remember from the Maps Limits video, you might remember the largest map size you can make in Hammer is 32,768 units on all sides, which is 32.768 kilo Hammer units. This is about 624.23 meters on all sides, giving it a volume of about 35,184,372,088,832 hammer units. In metric units, that's a volume of about 0.24 cubic kilometers. Already, that's pretty big, but we can go further than just what the player can inhabit with a skybox. See, a 3D skybox makes the map visually 16 times larger, giving us a visual area of about 100 square kilometers. Of course, we will have to sacrifice some height of the map in order to put one in, but that's not a big deal. This is actually like the size of a small city now that I think about it, which is pretty cool. You could probably build a small city to scale, like Minecraft's Build the Earth, but in Source. Though you would not be able to put props in it because you'd likely just run out of entity slots. But then that raises the question about the engine itself, because we can go beyond it. So, how big is it? Well, assuming the engine's limits are up until the game crashes, from the number that I mentioned in the video, the maximum value on all three axes is 393,698,639,872 hammer units. Extend the full length to account for the negatives and zero, and we get 787,397,279,745 hammer units in height, length, and width of the engine cube that we're making. For reference, to go from the center of the map to the crash point is about 7.5 million kilometers, or 7.5 gigameters, so each side of the cube is about 15 gigameters in length. This really puts into perspective how small the maps are, because maps are only 0.00000416% of a side length in this cube. And in terms of volume, well, the volume of the map is even more insignificant when compared against the volume of the engine cube, because the volume of the engine cube is... Oh, okay. 488 decillion, 181 nonillion, 963 octillion, 977 septillion, 299 sextillion, 105 quintillion, 948 quadrillion, 133 trillion, 748 billion, 379 million, 418,625 cubic hammer units. Just so you know, the map's volume is only about 7.207 times 10 to the negative 21% of the total volume of the engine cube. This thing is about 3,375 cubic gigameters. You know what else has that much volume? Like, 3,000 of our sun? I mean, you could put 3 billion Earths inside this thing. So, now you've walked away with more knowledge, knowing not just how big a hammer unit is from the short, but after seeing this, knowing that you can indeed measure with them and figure out how big fictional objects are. So, you can use this knowledge to... I don't know, figure out your height and hammer units, I guess? Really, is just doing the math backwards. Oh, and I know some of you are going to want to know the height of the Citadel using the same method I did for finding Gordon's height with the chart. It's 3,237.504 meters, so... You know, 3.2 3 kilometers is reasonable for building height, I think.